Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video I'm going to go over the top 10 most common dryer problems. In the last two years I've worked on a lot of dryers. Gas and electric, old, really old, new dryers, laundry centers, stacked washer and dryers, all kinds of stuff. And every call I went to, I briefly logged it, so the reason why I was there and what I did to fix it. Out of all those logs, I came up with a list like this of the top 10 dryer problems. I categorized them all and how many times I encountered each problem. So there was a total of 381 dryer calls and 51 different problems. So for the top 10 problems, I'm going to take a little bit more time explaining them and what causes them. As for the other 41 problems, those are, I'm just going to go briefly over all of them at the end of the video as honorable mentions. There's a lot of problems to cover, so without further delay, let's just get started. The champion, the number one problem, is a noisy dryer coming in with 40 calls. So a noisy dryer, most common call, so I'll come out to a dryer and it's either rattling, making some kind of a rattle noise, maybe it's a coin noise, so the baffles that are inside the dryer drum, those paddles, sometimes coins get in there, and as the drum spins it goes clunk, 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 clunk as those coins are bouncing around in there. Could be that, sometimes it's a screeching noise, or other times it could be like a metal on metal grinding noise as well. So what causes a noisy dryer? Sometimes it could be caused by a rattling vent in the back. If it's not connected securely, sometimes this can rattle and make a noise that way. Other times the rollers, if they're not spinning nicely, if they're starting to seize up, that can be the cause of the noise. But most of the time, most of the time that noise is caused by the idler pulley or the tensioner pulley. So you've got the motor that spins and then you have a belt that goes from the motor to the tensioner pulley and then around the drum. The purpose of the tensioner pulley is to put tension on this whole setup and cause the drum to spin. So that pulley, as the belt rides on it all the time, eventually it wears off a little groove on that little pulley. It's just made out of plastic usually. And when that groove is worn out, if the belt that's riding on it is not evenly spread out through the whole surface, if it's kind of lopsided on any position, or if it's stuck in a little groove, it'll start to screech. And sometimes that screech gets really loud, and other times it even sounds like metal on metal, and it's really just that plastic little pulley making a whole lot of racket. With noisy dryers, almost every time you will have to take the dryer apart and visually verify where the problem is, unless it's a rattling vent. That one you can actually fix without taking anything apart, which is kind of nice. And I know that Whirlpool washers, there are a lot of different kinds, but Whirlpool washers, they even have a maintenance kit specifically for this reason, for like noisy dryers. So that kit comes with the idler pulley or the tension pulley assembly, comes with the little bracket and the spring. It comes with the belt and it comes with all the rollers for the dryer. So you, whenever you have a problem with anything of that sort, noisy dryer problems or like wheels getting stuck, you replace all of that stuff in the kit and the dryer is good to go for another 10 years or so. So if you have a noisy dryer, it's screeching like crazy, most likely your problem is that idler pulley, but if you're going to be replacing that pulley, I would go ahead and replace the belt as well. Usually those come as a pair and if you're feeling good, you can replace the rollers too. And by the way, just so you know, there's a video on how to replace pretty much every single dryer part on every single brand out on YouTube. So regardless of what brand you have, which part you have to replace, almost guaranteed that there's a video that'll show you step by step how to replace that part. So if I'm going down this list and you're like, oh wow, that's my problem, I need to replace that, just look it up on YouTube and there's a good chance you will find a step by step instruction video on how to replace it. And problem number two, coming in with 30 calls, is a blown thermal fuse. Usually it looks like a little oval white disc made out of plastic. It could be different shapes. There's a few different styles out there and they can look a little bit differently, but for the most part, they look just like a white little disc shape or an oval little shape. And I actually have a video of where I take apart my dryer and I show you where that is and how to replace it if you want to see more on that. But basically the thermal fuse is there to prevent the dryer from overheating. If the dryer is getting too hot, that's almost like a little safety switch that'll shut the dryer off to prevent any dryer or house fires caused by the dryer. Almost every single blown thermal fuse call that I go to is caused by bad airflow. So for some reason, either the vent pipe is plugged up, maybe outside the vent hood, if you have like those little grates outside, those could get plugged up. Or if you forget to clean out your lint screen, 
Looks like we forgot this last time. If you forget to clean up your lid screen, that will definitely slow down your airflow or completely restrict it. And if you neglect this long enough, that thermal fuse, because of the lack of airflow, it, the dryer is going to get hotter and hotter. <coughs> I shouldn't have moved this stuff. The dryer is going to get hotter and hotter, and then it will cause that thermal fuse to blow. And for most dryers, that's a one-time blow fuse. So if that thing blows, you can't reset it or anything. You have to take the dryer apart, and you have to replace that fuse before your dryer will work again. And problem number three with 29 calls is weak gas valve coils. And I actually have a video of my dryer. It's a Maytag dryer where I replaced my gas valve coils. So if you want to see how it's done on this dryer, check that video out. But anyways, those little gas valve coils, they're just two black cylindrical shaped coils, plastic housing, that go on top of a gas valve. And when they're energized, they're the ones that open up the gas valve and allow the gas to come through. So what happens is, with time, those little gas valve coils, they become really weak or altogether just die and stop working. When they become really weak, sometimes that's accompanied by a little chattering sound. So if you ever hear your dryer when it just starts, if you hear it rattling or clunking really quickly, like tunk 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 clunk clunk, I don't know how else to explain that noise. But if you hear a loud chatter like that when the burners are supposed to light, which is probably like, I don't know, 20 seconds after the dryer starts to spin, that is most likely weak gas valve coils and you do need to replace them. Other times, it'll seem like the dryer will start normally, It'll start heating and everything, but after about five minutes, the dryer just completely stops heating. So it'll spin, but after that, it just stops heating. And you know, when you go to take out your clothes, they're all still damp and they're cool. There's no heat. And you get mad, you close the dryer back up, you start it back up, you let it run for about a minute, you open it up, you stick your hand in there, and it's hot. And you're wondering, what the heck? It heats, but when I come back in an hour, my clothes are still all cold and damp. That is probably weak gas valve coils as well. And if the gas valve coils are dead altogether, then the flames on your gas dryer are not going to light at all, and you're just not going to get any heat beginning or end of the cycle. Okay, I think that's more than enough about gas valve coils. Moving on to problem number four, coming in with 26 calls, is restricted venting. Especially if you have a really long vent run, meaning your vent pipe, flexible or solid, is very far i mean it's like 30 or 40 feet if it goes across you know your whole basement your whole living room to get out the other side of the house a lot of times i see those plugged the most often so restricted venting you really should get your dryer vent cleaned especially if you have a long one every couple of years otherwise a lot of lint and debris that gets past the lint screen ends up in your vent pipe and with time that builds up and restricts the airflow and a lot of times, a restricted vent will be accompanied by a trip thermal fuse as well. So if you're replacing a thermal fuse, which I went over as problem number one, there's a good chance that you're having an issue with airflow. And a lot of times that is caused by the vent having a lot of crap in it, or the vent hood outside is plugged up. About 50% of dryers are pretty easy to access, so you can actually pull it out yourself and disconnect the vent. From the back of the dryer a lot of times the most accumulation happens right in the back there you can take this tape off off of your vent and take your piping apart take a look at it there vacuum it out or take a long brush and just brush it out but if your vent is really long or it's hard to access or if it goes through ceilings and stuff then you will have to call a vent cleaning company to come out and clean your dryer vents and moving on problem number five with 23 calls is a clogged or damaged lint screen so the lint screen, if it's damaged, a lot of times the frame around it, the plastic frame, is going to be the one that's all busted up or cracked. Or maybe the lint screen itself will have holes in it or some tears for some reason. Maybe a hairpin or something got through. And if it's clogged, almost every time it's clogged because of, you know, those fabric softener sheets that feel really waxy. If people use a lot of those, with time, they tend to, you know, the wax comes off of them and they tend to plug up that lint screen in a wax. And that restricts the airflow. And a lot of times this is accompanied by damp clothes. So when your dryer is done, you open it up, you take your clothes out, they feel really hot, yet they're still damp. They're not fully dried out, even though in the past, in the same settings, you know, if you set it to 60 minutes all the time, it used to dry just fine. And now you're noticing that the clothes are coming out damp. Maybe your lint screen is plugged up. So you can either try to clean it up, soak it, and brush off all that wax, or just replace that lint screen altogether. Next is number six with 20 calls, 
and that is a bad dryer drive motor. So the motor that spins the drum, sometimes that goes bad. If it's completely bad, of course nothing will work at all. And if you take apart your dryer and you were just trying to run it, that motor will be really hot. And other times that motor will just start to overheat before it completely fails. So this one's kind of interesting because it tends to be an intermittent problem. So I'll come out to a dryer and the customer says it wasn't spinning, it wasn't working at all. And the very first thing I do when I go out to a dryer, regardless of what the customer tells me, I always test it myself and see what it does first before I start taking the dryer apart. And you know, I turn the dryer on, it turns on, the burner's light, the drum is spinning, everything's working fine. And the customer is all flustered. They're like, well, it, it wasn't working. Like nothing was working at all. It wasn't spinning. And a lot of times if I let the unit run for about 15, 20 minutes, it, the motor will actually overheat in front of me and stop spinning. In that case, there's really not much you can do except replace that dryer motor. And of course, if it's not spinning at all, you're, the only way to verify is with the meter. So if the motor is getting power, but it's not spinning, then it's a bad dryer motor. And number seven with 18 calls is a bad timer. So this is only the older dryers that will have this. The newer dryers will have a control board. But this timer is the thing that spins or advances as the dryer cycle continues and then it shuts off. Most frequently when I see bad timers, that's because they stop advancing. So for example, if I set my dryer to 70 minutes, I come back in half an hour and it's still at 70 minutes. And in three hours, <laughs> the dryer is still running. That almost guarantees that I have a bad timer. And they can behave differently. Sometimes the timer will not send power to the igniter, so it's not gonna light the burners. Or if you have an electric dryer, maybe the timer is the one that's not sending power to the element, the heating element, and not turning it on. So it can behave differently, but most of the time when I see a bad timer, it's because the timer is not advancing. And the fix for that is to simply replace the timer. And just so you know, if you don't know this already, the timer is actually pretty bulky. It's a lot bigger than this little knob right here. Usually it's a big rectangle thing that is behind the knob. So you have to take this front panel off or you just take the back off and you'll see that timer. And the timer is actually pretty easy to replace if you know what you're doing. I would highly recommend if you're replacing a timer for the first time to actually go on YouTube and look up, you know, Maytag timer replacement or whatever brand you have and go step by step and follow what they're doing. Even though the timer will likely just have one big electrical plug, what can go wrong, right? It's sometimes there's just little nuances that, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you'll be stuck doing this little job for two hours. Whereas if you opened up a video, it'd probably only take you about 10 minutes. And number eight with 16 calls is a bad heating element. This applies only to electric dryers, but the heating element, just like anything else, with time, it does fail, it goes out. Most of the time, the heating elements, they fail visibly. So if you take your dryer apart and you find the heating element, you're actually gonna see one of those electrical coils, the heating element itself that heats up. A lot of times it'll be actually broken. You'll see a wire dangling, or there'll be some spot where it actually burnt out. And you can visually verify that that heating element is bad, even without using a meter. Replacing a heating element is not too hard, but if you've never done it before, once again, I would suggest following along a video step-by-step -step, of how to do it. That'll make your life a lot easier. Ironically, the next problem is a bad igniter. Coming in in ninth place with 14 calls, that only applies to gas dryers. They have a hot surface igniter that glows really hot and that's what lights the gas. Those igniters with time would just wear and tear as you keep using your dryer. They do fail as well. And almost every time, those, just like the heating element, you will be able to visually verify. You'll see a little crack in that igniter or a burnt out mark, and then you know for sure that that igniter is bad. But that being said, there are times where you don't see any cracks in it, but it still failed. In that case, you pretty much, the only way to verify it is to just try replacing it, or if you have a meter, to ohm it out and see if it's bad or not. And in 10th place with 13 calls is a bad cycling thermostat. So a cycling thermostat, is in both electric and gas dryers. That's the little thermostat. That's like a little, I don't even know how to describe it, a little switch, I'll include a picture of it, that controls the temperature inside of the dryer. So the way the dryer works is it gets to about, I don't know, 190, 200 at most degrees inside of the dryer, the heat does. It gets up to about 200 degrees, let's say. Then the cycling thermostat is the one responsible for turning off the heating element 
or the burner and the heat drops to about 120, then the cycling thermostat is the one responsible for turning the heat back on. It goes back up and that it just the dryer just keeps doing that over and over and over and over again. Heats up, cools down, heats up, cools down, heats up, cools down. And that's the way the dryer works. And the piece responsible for controlling those temperatures is that cycling thermostat. So if there's a bad cycling thermostat, the dryer may not work at all, or the temperatures are going to start running away. Either they'll get too low, or they're going to get too high, or the dryer will start doing weird things like that. So replacing the thermostat will, most of the time, take care of a problem like that. And those were the top 10 dryer problems that are the most common. Now, moving on to the honorable mentions that did not make the list, I'll go a lot quicker through these than I did the first 10, just because there's so many of them. Without further ado, let's just begin. The first one is, with three calls, parts that are NLA, no longer available parts. With dryers, that doesn't seem to happen very often. Most dryers, the parts are pretty readily available for them, but I did come across three calls where the parts were no longer available. Most of the time, the part that is no longer available is an electronic control board. So if the control board is no longer available and the dryer doesn't turn on, well, there's nothing you can do if you can't get a new board. In that case, the whole dryer just needs to get replaced. The next one with seven calls is a bad door switch. So all dryers will have a door switch. So on mine, I have a push button door switch right here. Sometimes it'll be a little paddle that gets pushed in when you close the door. And unless the dryer door is closed, the dryer will not work. Sometimes that door switch gets broken and it's either broken in the fully closed position or fully open position. So if it's closed all the time, regardless of whether your door is open or not, the dryer will keep spinning. And if it's broken in the open position, then regardless of whether your door is opened or closed, your dryer will not work. I had eight calls where the high limit was bad, and that is almost like a thermal fuse, but it trips a little bit sooner than the thermal fuse, and it resets automatically. So once again, if the burner tube is getting too hot, then this high limit will shut the dryer off until it cools down, and then it'll reset and try again. I replaced the belt 10 times on dryers, so once in a while you'll come to a dryer where the, where the belt is completely ripped. That one is pretty easy. If you stick your hand into the dryer drum and you spin it, if the drum is very easy to spin, then almost for sure that the belt is ripped. So take the dryer apart, replace the belt, and you should be good to go. I had nine calls where the blower wheel was bad, and the blower wheel is typically going to be in the back of the dryer, and almost every time when I see a bad blower wheel, it's simply cracked where it threads onto the shaft of the motor. And when it's cracked like that, um, sometimes when the dryer turns off, you can still hear something whirling. A lot of times that's just because that blower wheel is cracked and it keeps freewheeling even after the dryer is off. A bad blower wheel can cause the thermal fuse to trip as well. Just another thing to look for. So if you see a cracked or a damaged blower wheel, then just go ahead and replace that or maybe it's missing a couple of the blades, a pencil or something got in there and knocked them out. They're made out of plastic, most of them, so they're not too terribly hard to break. I had 10 calls where the idler pulley or the tensioner pulley was completely melted and destroyed, just laying on the bottom of the dryer somewhere. And that happens when the idler pulley just completely seizes up and does not spin. The motor keeps spinning, the drum keeps spinning, and the belt just starts to rub and rub and rub on that pulley and the pulley is not spinning, it just rubs right through it until that pulley just completely gets busted up and falls down to the floor. You replace the pulley and you're good to go. I had four calls where I had to replace the rear bearing. This is mostly on frigid air dryers and there's a big metal bearing in the back. It comes as a kit. That bearing is kind of a pain in the butt to replace. Um, if you ever do end up replacing those and you're struggling putting it in, I would recommend taking like three little screwdrivers or maybe a poke-in thermometer and poke them into the screw holes to have it hold that assembly from the back. And it's hard to explain, but if you ever come across this, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Because you have to, at the same time, hold it from the back and you have to screw it in from the front. So it's really helpful to have two people, but usually you're alone. So if you are alone, stick something in there, like little screwdrivers or your probe thermometer to hold it from the back while you put the stuff together from the front. But anyways, moving on. I had one call that was really interesting. That's where the drum actually wore through all the glides and it went down to the drum door. 
and it actually was spinning on metal on metal for so long that the actual door got welded onto the drum. So when I got out to that dryer, I literally couldn't open that door. I had to pry it open, and as I was prying it open, I could see pieces of the drum just getting ripped off along with the door. That was kind of bizarre, and to repair that dryer, it would have been really expensive, so that customer ended up getting a whole new dryer. There were two times where I actually witnessed the dryer set on fire. I mean, it wasn't big fires, but the first one, it was just smoldering. If you open up the dryer in the back, there's usually that screen with a bunch of little holes in it. There was a bunch of fuzzy looking stuff that for some reason was pretty flammable. So when I fixed the dryer and turned it on, that stuff started to smolder and catch on fire. And I smelt it before it got too extreme, opened it up and saw it, turned it off, took it all apart, cleaned it out, put it back together and everything was good. But the second one that caught on fire, that one was a little bit more exciting. So I replaced a burnt out igniter and I failed to look down the burner tube to make sure that it was all clean and there was nothing in there. So everything else looked clean. I put it all back together, turned it on, and as I'm putting tools in my bag, I smell the burning smell. I open up the dryer and that screen, I can already see flames just shooting up in the back of that tube. So I quickly turned everything off and luckily the flames started to die down as I was hesitating for a couple seconds whether I should go get the fire extinguisher or start taking this thing apart. As I was hesitating for a couple of seconds, I did notice that that flame started to die down. But it was on long enough that the smoke detector in the house went off. The customer came running down, making sure that everything's okay. I said, no problem, everything's good, I was just testing it. So I took it all apart, cleaned it all out, and it turns out that at the end of that burner tube, there was just a giant hairball right at the end of the burner tube pet hair or, I don't know, somebody's hair, big hairball at the end of that burner tube. So once I fixed that igniter and that flame lit again, it started roasting that hairball and it set on fire, which effectively filled the house with roast, hair-smelling aroma. I had six calls where the felt seal was bad, and that is basically the drum. It rides on the cabinet of the dryer with the help of rollers, and to prevent the drum from rubbing on the cabinet, of the dryer and making metal to metal sounds. There's a felt seal that goes all the way around, this fuzzy looking band. And with time, that band rubs down, and if it rubs down all the way, starts screeching and making a lot of noise, that's when you gotta replace that felt. Or sometimes it just rips, because it got snagged by something. So I replaced six of those. I had nine calls that had a bad control board. That's on newer dryers. If you have a bad control board, sometimes it won't display anything at all. So the board is getting power, yet it's not lighting up. Sometimes half of the buttons won't work, or you know, you press the start button and it's not working. And there's a whole slew of other things or symptoms that that board can do. And of course the remedy for that is to just replace the whole control board and everything goes from there. I had three sensor pads that were defective, and that's with the dryers that have the auto dry. So if you open up the dryer, there's these little pads two metal looking pads or strips. Those are the ones that are basically measuring the humidity inside of that dryer drum. So as the clothes are spinning in there and they keep swiping on those pads, that kind of tells the dryer how dry your clothes are. And once they dry out to a point where there's not enough humidity in the air, that's when it turns off and cycle is complete. Sometimes those sensor pads go bad and the dryer can keep going and going and going and going. One time I had the dryer just not turn on on the auto cycle at all because of those sensor pads. And another time, somehow something snagged it and those pads, one of them just got completely ripped out. So once again, had to replace those sensor pads and everything was good. I had one 240 volt outlet that was bad. This was on an electric dryer and it was tripping the breaker. When I took apart the panel, you know, where that big 240 volt outlet plugs into, Took that panel off, everything behind there was just roasted and crispy. You know, crispy, crunchy plastic that falls apart if you touch it. So of course, that outlet had to be replaced and everything was good. Next one was a crispy terminal block. So similar deal, electric dryer, except not the outlet was crispy, but the wires that go into the dryer itself. There's a terminal block where those power wires go into. That whole block, made out of plastic, was completely shard and just falling apart as well. Once again, I think it was just a loose connection there, and loose connections equal heat. So it roasted that plastic there, replaced that terminal block, and all was good. I had four calls where the vent was simply disconnected, and the call, I mean the customer would usually call because every time they turn on the dryer, 
there's all this dust flying around. So of course, almost every time you just go back there and either a pipe got disconnected somewhere or on the bottom right where the dryer is, you know, where it plugs into the dryer, it's completely disconnected and all the lint and the hot air is just coming out into the room. Connect that all back together, tape it, do whatever, and it's all good. I had two calls where there was loose or burnt wires. A lot of times this would be accompanied by a tripping breaker. So if somebody calls me and says, hey, every time I turn on my dryer, the breaker's tripping, there's a good chance that there's a loose wire somewhere and that metal part is just touching something in the dryer. So every time you turn the dryer on, that loose connection or the loose wire touches something, bam, trips the breaker. So take the dryer apart, look for any black burnt marks, look for any loose connections, hook them back up, snip them off and put a new connector if need be, and everything is good. I had one interesting call where a pair of panties actually wrapped completely around the blower motor, just nice and evenly, and that was completely restricting the airflow, and that tripped the thermal fuse. All I had to do on that one is take those and give them back to the owner. Once I removed the panties, everything worked great. I had eight calls where the glides were worn out. Those are usually on frigid air dryers, but other dryers have them as well. So instead of rollers, they just have these little pieces of plastic, glides they're called, on the top, and the drum rides on those. With time, those get worn down and they should get replaced. Eight times I replaced those. Eight times I also replaced the rollers, just the rollers. And that is usually accompanied by replacing that bearing that the roller's on as well. There was three times where I had broken baffles. Those are the paddles inside of the drum. Somehow they break off, either something snagged them or, I don't know, maybe they put boots in there or something. Those paddles break off. Those are actually pretty easy to replace. So three times I had to replace the paddles. I had two times where the dryer was simply set to air fluff. Some dryers have a setting where if you set it to air fluff, the burners do not come on. So the customer sets it to, I don't know, 90 minutes. They come back in 90 minutes and the clothes are still damp. And I come out there and I notice that it's set to air fluff. I ask them about it and they're like, what? We didn't even know that was a feature. So set that back to normal and everything works good. I had six calls with a bad thermistor and that kind of works like a cycling thermostat. So it controls the temperatures inside of the dryer turns on and off the heating element or the burner. I had six of those that were bad. I had six bad front bearings. So the front bearing is usually made out of plastic. It's in front. And typically those front bearings will have those glides. If the glides get completely worn down, then the drum starts to ride on that front bearing. And sometimes it could start wearing down through that bearing as well. In that case, you have to replace the glides and that front bearing. So I had six of those. I had two broken door handles. Sometimes people pull on the door handles a little bit too hard and they snap right off. Replace two of those. I had three completely plugged vent hoods. So if you go outside, the little exit vent, a lot of times it's a hood, either a flapper or just like these stripes or strips of plastic that sometimes dry out and crack and break. But anyways, where the vent comes out of the house, sometimes it gets completely plugged up there especially if you're going to like a hair salon place or great clips or one of those haircutting places oftentimes outside those vent hoods they get completely plugged up and that's why the thermal fuse trips so i had three of those that were completely plugged i had one call where the leveling leg was broken all i had to do is replace the leveling leg i had three calls where the door the dryer door was broken and i mean like really broken to the point where it's falling apart to replace three doors I replaced three sets of door hinges. Once again, they were super loose and there's nothing you can do to tighten them. Replaced three door hinges. I had one call where the motor mount was broken. So on this particular dryer, the motor mount, where the motor sits on, that mount was part of the whole dryer cabinet. So because somehow they had gotten broken, they just needed to get a whole new dryer. There's nothing we could do for that. I had four calls where the dryer vent was bad and they just needed to get a new dryer vent. Sometimes if it's a flexible, you come across vents that are just crimped. Somehow either somebody pushed a dryer into them or something and they got crimped and you can't really fold them back out. And other times the vent just simply has holes in them. So especially the flexible ones, of course, you know, they have holes all over them and dust is leaking out. In those cases, the vent does need to get replaced. I had two calls where the start button was bad. Some dryers actually have a start button where you press the start button and the dryer starts up. 
I've seen a couple of those where they go bad and no matter how much you press them, they don't start. Replace two of those. I had one bad fabric selector switch. So just like the start button, it's one of these switches. The fabric selection switch was completely broken. So no matter what you picked, it would always stay in one setting. Replaced one of those. I had two bad odor smells. So I got called out because the dryer was making a really bad smell while it was running. The first one was because there was a lot of dog hair all over the heating element, just plastered all over it. So I took the dryer apart, took that element out, and I blew it out with some compressed air. I cleaned as much of that dog hair out as I could from that element, put it all back together, and told the homeowner if it continues to smell, then call us back and we'll replace that element, but it should be good. The other call was somebody was refinishing their floors, staining them, and whenever somebody does that, the odors from that they kind of linger around in the air for a while, for like a day or two. And if somebody uses the dryer with all those odors in the air, especially if you have a gas dryer, that flame is going to start burning some of those odors off, the odors that are in the air. And it gives you a really chemical type of odor in the air, which is bizarre. And of course, it only happens when they're running the dryer. And that's when I come in. I come out, check everything. Everything's good. Tell them, hey, just let it air out. Give it a day or two and it should be good. I had two calls where I had to reset the safety switch, and I believe both of them were a Bosch dryer. So the thermal fuse that I mentioned a lot in this video so far, on a Bosch dryer, it's actually resettable. So it's a safety switch that measures the temperature. If it gets too hot, it trips. But the only downside is on those Bosch dryers, you probably have to take apart at least 30 screws before you can get to that reset switch. You hit it, it resets it, and the dryer is back in business. I had one call with a bad door seal. So some of these doors, not some of them, but actually quite a few of them, they have a little rubber piece going all around the door. And sometimes with time, that little seal just starts to fall apart or something snagged it and it just gets ripped off. I replaced one of those. Other ones you can typically put back in. You don't have to replace them. I've seen bad door seals more than once, but only one I have to completely replace. I had two calls with a bad gas valve, so the gas valve was stuck in a closed position. The gas valve would be getting power, but it would not be opening. So I replaced two gas valves. I had one call where the gas was simply off to the dryer. The homeowner thought they were turning off the gas to the fireplace, but it turns out they turned off the gas to the dryer instead. I had two calls where I had to replace the lint screen housing. That's basically the thing where the lint screen slides into. And one of them, I think it just had a big crack. So it was, you know, stuff was getting through a lot. Socks were getting stuck in it and it was snagging clothes. Just replaced that whole housing. And the other one, I guess the dryer was overheating at one point and that caused that lint screen housing to get warped. So it was really hard to cram that lint screen into there. So I replaced that lint screen housing and everything was good. I had two calls where the knobs got broken. So all I had to do was just order some new knobs, replace those knobs, or maybe the homeowner can just put them on themselves and everything was good. I had one call where the buzzer was bad. So actually that buzzing sound that the dryer makes, there's a little buzzer device that makes that sound. And I've only come across that once where that buzzer went bad, but I replaced it, everything was good. And last but not least, I'm almost out of breath. I had five calls where the dryer belt that spins the drum actually slipped off of the pulley. So I take it all apart and there's really nothing wrong, but somehow, that dryer belt actually slipped off of the pulley and of course that stops everything. So I put that belt back on the tensioner pulley, turn it on, test it, make sure everything's running good and the day is saved. My guess is that they probably put something heavy into the dryer and that's what caused that. Well guys, and that is all I had, all 51 dryer problems that I encountered and as you saw, some of them more than once. I hope you found this video useful and if you have anything to add, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video until the end. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comments section below, let me tell you something that I learned recently. Don't worry, this one's not a joke. This is actually something I learned. So if you're like me, you absolutely love to go to sleep late. There's just something about it that just makes you feel good. I, I love going to sleep late. But after doing some reading and some interesting articles that I came across, I am now thoroughly convinced that it's actually pretty bad to go to sleep late, health-wise, and it's good to go to sleep earlier. So let me just read you one little quote that may help you at least consider going to sleep earlier, like it did for me. So here goes. 
Uh, there's no way I'm going to memorize this, and I'm probably going to do a horrible job of paraphrasing it, so I'm just going to read it. Did you know, between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., we produce greatest amounts of melatonin. 80% is produced during this time, so from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Melatonin influences human growth hormone secretion, which is used to help the body burn fat, repair collagen, regenerate lean body tissue, improve bone density, enhance immunity, and repair cells. So basically, a lot of good stuff happens between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. And for me, a lot of times I would go to sleep only at 2 a.m. or a little bit later. So I would miss all that good stuff. And of course, the older I get, the more I feel the effects of that. And, you know, my body's not keeping up like it used to. So now I'm changing my habits. I'm trying to go to sleep at 10. That's a little bit early, at least at 11 o'clock. And the first week was kind of rough, you know, trying to rehabilitate and get realigned, readjusted to the new schedule. But now it's feeling a lot better. It feels great to actually wake up. You wake up on your own earlier. You know, you don't have to have an alarm clock, which is pretty amazing. Anyway, I'm done with my little rant. I hope that at least motivates you a little bit to go to sleep earlier. It is healthier for you, you know, between those hours. But anyway, that is really all I had to say. See you next time.